So in this video, I'm going to give a quick recap of where Poisson's ratio comes from. So if you remember back to last time we talked about stress and strain, I started with a member of given properties. So for example, I'm going to call the original length of the member LO, the original diameter of the member DO, and the original cross-sectional area AO. And what happens is when I apply a force onto the member um, of size F, in this case it's a tensile force, what we'd expect is that the member is going to extend in its length. So we measured this in here as being the change in length delta L. And as a result of it extending in one direction, what we will observe is a contraction in the other. So the diameter here has gone from something um, relatively large to something quite small. So this in here, I'm going to call delta D for the change in diameter. Now, we said that last time when we talked about this, we could measure the stress, the average normal stress within our material, as being equal to the applied force divided by the original cross-sectional area, and that the strain in the material was equal to the change in length divided by the initial length. So where Poisson's ratio comes in is looking at what happens between the strain in one direction, so this one here, which is the length direction of our specimen, and what happens when we look at the other direction, which I'm going to call the lateral direction, which is the diameter. Okay, so we can apply, this, apply the same kind of thing, and we're going to say that the lateral strain is equal to the change in diameter divided by the initial diameter of our specimen. Now, to avoid confusion, I'm going to rename this one and call it um, the longitudinal strain. So I have substrip long. Okay. Now, when we relate these two properties together, the strain properties, we end up with Poisson's ratio. Okay. It's the ratio of the lateral strain divided by the longitudinal strain. And there is a negative in here to correct for the direction. So Poisson's ratio is always going to be a positive number. And when you apply a tensile force here, you'd expect the strain to be a positive number because it's extending. But what happens is when you extend it in this direction, you get a smaller diameter. So there's the strain in the lateral direction becomes negative because it's getting smaller. And that's why there's a negative in this part of the equation, just to correct for that. Okay. So this here, it's the Greek letter nu, and it is the symbol used for Poisson's ratio. And really all it is, it's, it's literally the ratio of how far a material is going to extend in one direction compared to how much it's going to contract in the other direction. Okay. Um, one other thing to note is that this is a unitless um, property. Um, simply because, remember, we also said that strain um, is a unitless property, so something unitless divided by something else unitless is going to give a final answer of Poisson's ratio, which is also unitless. So uh, it, Poisson's ratio is a material property, so each different type of material will have a different Poisson's ratio. And I've provided here just an example of some values um, for different materials. And what you'll notice is that Poisson's ratio usually tends to be in the range of about 0.2 to 0.4, even 0.5 um, for its value. Okay, so that's for normal materials. It's normally going to be within that kind of range. So if you end up with um, a question where you need to calculate Poisson's ratio, that tends to be what you're aiming for. But you can see it can vary a little bit um, outside of that. Um, yeah, as you can see. So that's all there is for this video, um, and I'll see you in some of the examples looking at how to apply 